All right, everyone, how are you doing out there today? I hope you're doing well. A few videos ago, we went to this dumpster and we found several of these refrigerant canisters in there. And I was excited to find them because there was a project I've been wanting to do, which of course is making a homemade foundry to melt copper, aluminum, brass, etc. Now, what I liked about this container was that it had the four feet on the bottom and it had handles on the top. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drill a hole in it and we're going to make sure there is no refrigerant left in the tank. Once we drill the hole, you'll see where I drilled it at. Uh, in the top, we will eventually have a three inch hole and so I drilled the hole there because it will, it will eventually go away. Now I use this piece of wood to, as a guide to go around the cylinder to give me a line so that I can use my uh, angle grinder to cut the lid off. And just like that, our canister is cut in two pieces. Next, I'm going to use this flap disc sander to take off all of the metal burrs. I've, this is one of my favorite tools as you can use it to remove paint, rust, and other imperfections in metal. But it does a really good job of taking these burrs off. Now, if you're going to do this, I highly recommend you have gloves because these edges are sharp. That's it. The edges are sanded down, and now we move on to the next thing. This is a ceramic blanket that I purchased off of Amazon. It was actually way more material than I would ever need, but we'll get to that in a second. And this here is the fire brick that I picked up at my local Menards. It only cost about $15, and I was really surprised at how light this brick is. It's a refractory brick that is used to reflect the heat back into the fireplace. Now here we're going to use the lid as a template to cut out two bricks that we can sit in the bottom of our container. I go back in with my angle grinder because I thought it was a really good way to cut these bricks quickly. Now I would only recommend that you would have a face mask on so you do not breathe the, the dust and probably have your wife's car out of the garage. With that, we have the two bricks in the bottom and now we're just gonna roughly put these other fire bricks in to see how much room we have once we put our crucible in. So now I want to test and see how much room I'm going to have once my crucible is inside. And I can see that I'm probably not going to have enough room after I have my ceramic blanket and my refractory cement covering that. So here I am marking the brick. I'm going to take one out to my table saw and see if I can cut it in half. I did and it was not the best results. So these next ones I actually used a rip fence to help me keep the cut much more even. Here I am taking a piece of the ceramic blanket and seeing how much room it's going to take up. And I can tell right away it's way too much. What's nice about this material is that it literally separates right down the middle and you can make it as thick as you want. It's just a matter of putting the bricks in, getting everything aligned, and trimmed up. With that, I do a final fitting of the crucible, and I think it's going to be just about right. This is the refractory motor that we're going to cover the entire thing with. I do this outside, and as you can see, there is snow and dog tracks on the ground. A couple things that I would highly recommend at this point is A, don't use as much water as I started with. Actually, start with your powder and slowly add water instead of adding powder to the water. 
Uh, also doing it outside in the cold with cold water made the material not want to bunch up and stick very smoothly. Here you can see I am applying it to the brick and it was really hard for it to stick until it got to room temperature. In the end, this was our final product. It turned out pretty smooth, I think. It looked really good. I was pretty happy with the finished product. Placing the crucible inside, I am still concerned that there's not enough room around it for the fire to go around and create that vortex that we're looking for. Now you remember that I like this lid because it had handles on it. Well, I took this three inch hole saw and had a little bit of an accident. It actually caused the handles to pop right off. So I'm going to have to improvise. So I'm going to cut the ceramic blanket into two pieces and we're going to stack them up and place them inside the lid so that the lid becomes uh, very insulated and holds the heat into the furnace. So here are the U-bolts that I'm going to use as the new handles. So first I have to drill four holes and then add the U-bolts. Our new handles are in and I really like the way that they turned out. Now I'm going to put in four holes on each side so we can drill holes and put in some washers that will hold in the insulation. I won't lie, this took me several times to figure this out because I had bolts that were too long or too short. I finally had to make a run to the hardware store and I open my wallet to buy the right size bolts. I took this wheel and I just went down and it cut right through it just like butter and removed the lining. So this is where we begin fabricating our gas blaster torch for use in the foundry. All the instructions on how to do this can be found at the King of Random and he has a video called Convert Your Backyard Foundry to Propane. And that video breaks down step by step and does a really excellent job of showing you how to do this. Again, I will put a link to that video in the description. Here I am making the nozzle per the King of Random's instructions. The only thing is I don't have a drill press and I wish I would have because when I get finished here, you can see the nozzle is slightly out of center. Once the hole is drilled, we use a tap to give it the threads that will hold the nozzle in place. This coupling will be the holder for the nozzle we just created. The first thing we have to do is sand down four sides of it and then drill and tap those holes as well. With the four holes drilled and tapped on this coupling, we can now insert bolts that will hold the nozzle. But first we must flatten four sides of the nozzle. We set the coupling over the nozzle and we tighten the four bolts to hold the nozzle in place. Just like that. Then we attach it to our gas hose. And just one more thing, we put on our six inch pipe. Now it's time to test it. As you can hear here, the gas comes through. So now it's time to ignite it. With this lighter, I can't get the flame to stay on long enough. So I light a small piece of paper and then... Wow. 
Wow, it worked. Next, we need to drill a hole in the container, and I use this 1 and 3 8 inch hole saw to do the job. First, I drill through the metal, and then I angle it to drill through the rest of the material. Once we put in our hose nozzle, that will help create the vortex of heat to surround the crucible. And there you have it. There's the whole setup. The hose, the nozzle, and of course the foundry. I light some paper, put it inside, and then slowly open the gas chamber. The noise is louder than I thought it would be, but other people have said the same thing. The sheer noise this thing makes is kind of astounding. I'm a little nervous about it because A, I built it, and B, I keep, keep hearing this poof, poof, kind of a fluttering sound, and a poof. So I don't know, like that, right there. So I'm not sure if it's not getting enough gas, too much gas. Did I build something wrong? I don't know. Once I feel everything is warmed up, I open up the regulator to full and hope to melt some copper. You can see the crucible inside and it is full of copper that we stripped. This is what I am calling the backfire, where the flame almost looks like it's going out and then poof, it comes right back. I have no idea why this is happening. This got me wondering, it's been about 30 minutes now, and I just wonder if that orange flame shouldn't be blue. Maybe it's not getting enough propane. Maybe that popping sound is it not getting enough propane. I don't know. Let's go take a look inside. You can see here that the copper's gone down just a little bit, but as I replace the lid, I can see that there's a lot of flames coming out the side. So I cut another piece of that ceramic blanket with a hole in the center and it works really well as a sealer between the lid and the body. Here the copper has gone down about halfway, so at least something is going on. It's been an hour and a half. After an hour and a half, the copper has clumped down at the bottom of the crucible, and it's still in very fine pieces. Here I'm just testing copper pipe to see how it reacts to the heat. It did not melt either. to see I know on the camera but it, there's still little wires in there it's almost like it's solidified in the bottom but it never got really liquidy so I'm guessing that that's just a heat issue right. so you see it just it's there all the wires there it's probably a quarter full maybe maybe it got red hot, but I don't know. It's really weird. If anybody knows what I did wrong, 
let me know. Ugh, stinks. I should have some ventilation on. But it's like, that's copper now, I think. The bottom, but it just never got molten. It never got liquefied. Well, I just turned the uh, crucible over. It popped right out, wherever it is. <laughs> I'm going to take a closer look at it here in just a minute. Well, I accidentally dropped it a few times, but you can see that the copper just didn't get hot enough to melt. It came into a grouping of its own. I mean, it all compacted down, but uh, I'm getting, dirt, getting it all dirty. But you can see it just never got hot enough to melt. So interesting. And then the pot itself that I made. You can see all the cracking going on in there already. So, unfortunately, I'm going to say that this is a fail. All right, there you have it. That was my first attempt at a foundry. I learned a lot. I mean, a lot. I learned a lot about doing these how-to videos. It takes a lot more time than dumpster diving, believe me. Um, this has been a very stressful week at my job and trying to get this video completed has just added to all the frustrations. So I, so I am going to call this foundry Rocky because it went the distance. Like as in Rocky 1, Rocky the movie, Rocky Balboa. It went the distance with the champ Apollo Copper Creed. Now, it didn't win the battle because the copper never got metal. And so I am reaching out to other people that are into doing foundry stuff. What did I do wrong? If we look at the system, we have a 20 PSI regulator. And all the videos I've looked basically say 15, 17, 20 PSI is enough to melt copper. So if it's not the amount of gas being put out, is it the nozzle? The nozzle tip is 0 0.044 or less than 16th of an inch diameter. Does that need to be bigger to let more gas through? And finally, is it the crucible? Is the crucible simply too big for that foundry that it can't get that vortex of heat to surround it? Possibly. So those are the three things that I think about the most. I really think it's either the nozzle or the size of the crucible. Um, or could it have been the weather? It was 30 degrees out when I started. It was definitely down to the low 20s probably when I was done. So. Even though we're talking about 1900 degrees to melt copper, did the exterior air being 30 degrees zap that, pull that heat out that just couldn't get hot enough? So I don't know what the answers are. I need your help in figuring it out. But here's the thing. If I do figure it out, I'm going to look at your answers. I'm going to see what you recommend. I'm going to tweak this thing and we're going to come back for Rocky 2 where Rocky will win the battle. So leave your comments below. Let me know what you think I should do. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in and watching this episode and leaving your feedback below. Tomorrow, Bob and I are going to go out dumpster diving finally. I'm really excited about that, even though it's extremely, extremely cold and snowy outside. At least we're going to get out for a little bit. Anyway, take care, guys. We'll see you at the next dumpster. Peace out. Have a great week, everyone.